Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Wednesday, so we finished cutting wheat last night. Now double crop is on. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. It's after 7, but I'm headed to... Uh, the planter to get it going until someone can trade me off and then we'll keep the sprayer going as well. We also uh, have baling straw to do and to move off the bales and to stay ahead of the planter and drill. We would like to get the drill going too. It would be best to get all the double crop milo and soybeans in before July 1st so we don't lose moisture on top so that the crops ripen in the fall early enough before a freeze. Um, that being said, people double crop till like July 15th around here but that's getting pretty it gets a little more risky and you're kind of losing yield depending on the year by then so um, we like to aim for the 4th of July to have all of our grain double crops in and then our forages can do after that as long as we don't uh, lose moisture to plant into definitely feeling a little tired some of that's probably like okay we're done cutting the wheat you want to relax a little but um, there's still a lot to do a lot of important things we're having fun it's been a good year so far it's been a good wheat harvest season so far, I should say. The wheat uh, yields itself were rough, of course. It's good harvest and double cropping goes along with that. This forage sorghum looks really nice looking this direction. We didn't get the best stand on it. A rain came really quickly after we planted and sprayed it which we were really thankful for, but I think forage sorghum is a little more vulnerable to injury. Then now, we've had chinch bugs really bad coming out of the wheat fields this year. That tends to happen on hot, dry years. Dad says it used to happen a, a lot. You have treatment on your seed to kill the chinch bugs when the the sorghum's, you know, short. Then once it gets big, it's gone, and the chinch bugs just love the sorghum. And you can see they've eaten 100 feet into this field and just totally killed it. And they left the weeds, so thanks, chinch bugs. Why don't you eat pig weeds? Plan is to come in here and spray this and replant with our double crop forage sorghum, and it'll just be later. And then in the meantime, you can see they're still uh, chewing on these things. So I don't know, this, this is probably gonna suffer all the way until we chop it. Big inch and a half rain we got really helped the rest of this field take off and now hopefully there'll be enough mass that you know it can keep growing even with some pressure. And it's also mostly just a wall coming out of the wheat fields. It's, it's not a fun problem to have. It's what is really bugging everyone. Um, you can see the corn. Chinch bugs will eat the corn too. They don't, they don't even care about soybeans, but they will bother the corn a little. You can see it's a little shorter in the corner here versus the rest of the field, but uh, corn just seems to hold up a little better, which is why we keep planting dryland corn. But we really like forage sorghum. The cattle really seem to like forage sorghum silage um, when we're starting feeders. My goal was to grow a little more of this and grow it early and put it on top of the corn silage. Well, this is a big problem to my plan. We're either gonna have to put forage sorghum in fields that do not have wheat bordering them, or we're just gonna have to grow corn. If you get some big rains in May, which we usually do, the way I understand it, that slows the chinch bugs down a lot, uh, kind of drowns them, uh, washes out their, their eggs, or whatever you wanna call them. I'm not a entomologist or true agronomist. That's kind of what happens most years. They're not a big problem, but we have seen them before and it's just on hot, dry years. Wheat dies and ripens. They, they just move out of that wheat field in a big wave. And this year we've seen them at our house, walking across the, the sidewalk. Uh, they've just been all over the place. Um, and over at Lindsburg where uh, Greg's gotten got those bigger rains, he got more rain, uh, they're just not near as bad. So um, we are double cropping Milo uh, over at Greg's uh, quite a bit. And then out here, we're gonna do some second year wheat where the wheat was clean. We're gonna do some forages, but we're a little nervous about these chinch bugs. If it's not one thing, it's another, as many folks say. All right, I'm rolling. Uh, you can see we took time to 
put our row cleaners back on. When we're spreading the straw on the ground, and straw can be kind of tough, especially on the ground and like in the morning. So the row cleaners get the bulk of that away and it keeps the row units a lot cleaner. There you can see our double team Milo that uh, we're planting and uh, you can see we got good moisture. I mean, we got more moisture we're planting into than a lot of our full season Milo was because it's rained ever since uh, we did that, at least over here, which is a great thing. That's a great thing. After a, a wheat crop that was less than what we wanted it to be, um, there should be nitrogen uh, in the ground. Um, we're putting a little more down two by two with the planter. Um, and I would say this nice flat bottom ground field has every bit of potential that a uh, full season, especially full season upland Milo field would have. We'll still need rains in August, but that's what we ne need every year. Around here, it can rain the first half of the year, it can rain the second half of the year, or it can rain all year, or it can rain none of the year, but we can have pretty good hopes for a great Milo crop uh, here. Now I'm moving over here to my field. Nathan got it sprayed, or maybe he's about to spray it, but uh, Dad and Evan have been picking up, well, they bailed the straw bales from my field, and then they picked up uh, the bales, put them on the trailer, put them over along the edge of the field. So it should be all ready to plant. So Greg got this field double cropped this morning. I'm gonna help Nathan get the seed switched around to do the next double cropping field. It's a different variety of Milo. So still a lot of action over here at Greg's yard. A load of bales, the planter, sprayer, swather, fertilizer trailer. Okay, gotta load up some seed into PL5700. Get this going. Going on Greg's field, double crop. I brought our fertilizer rig to him. Trying to graze our bale storage area right before we put bales on it, and they're just swarming to get the shade. And they're kind of nibbling at some of the straw, but they're realizing their weeds are better. All right, I got the trailer out of here. My dad was so fast moving stuff off that he had them piled here ready to put on a trailer. And then Evan's still bailing. We kind of did this field in funny times, so now he's bailing across the waterway. All right, off we go to the next stack over here. You like the air conditioning, Kobe? <laughs> So Greg's uh, been planting, he's planting on his field now, I'm getting sprayed uh, what he's planted so far. Uh, I feel like the day's gone kind of slow, but I guess that's how it goes. It's already 6 o'clock, I thought I'd have a lot more done than I do. The wind shouldn't be too bad tomorrow too, so that's good. I've been planting all day. Milo. I've also been editing video uh, while I plant so that you guys can get to watch this. Uh, I think the most challenging time of year for me to get all the video edited is during wheat harvest because literally every waking hour I'm spending working. So the only way I can get this video edited is if I literally edit while I farm, uh, which is what I'm doing today. And, and, and planting is probably the easiest um, easiest way to, to farm and edit video at the same time. You have auto steer, you have monitors to tell you if something's going wrong. The only thing I really have to pay attention for is a, is a plug or something uh, behind me. So uh, I've got nice long half mile rows here and I'm gonna try to get some more videos edited for you. Nathan's gonna spray this field as I'm planting it. Also, I was just about to run out of fertilizer. Uh, there comes my refill. Perfect timing. Hidden spray in front of my house there. I'm planting. Look at that view right there. That is nice. Caught a little uh, daddy bright in time at the end of the day here, and then I'm gonna put her to bed since I'm, I'm right in front of my house. Brooke Anna, my wife, went over to see her sister at her parents' house, which is 
just over there uh, in Lindsberg. So Brighton and I are just gonna chill. I think Brighton's about to fall asleep though, so we better get in for bedtime, huh? It's about 8.30 and the sun's setting in the sky. Nathan had a uh, hydraulic hose leak on the sprayer, so he quit for the night. He's gonna try to get that fixed and then go again in the morning. I have uh, fertilizer for about another, I don't know, 40, 50 acres. And then uh, I'll, be, I'll be done with my field by then. And then we're gonna start on my uncle's field, which is right next to mine here uh, tomorrow. Try to get that done. So that's where I'll be planting tomorrow on the other side of those hay bales. And uh, we'll get this whole 240 acres of wheat all together here, planted to 240 acres of double crop Milo. And hopefully it keeps raining all summer because it is perfect, and I mean perfect, planting conditions. After the uh, eight inches of rain we had, it's had time to dry out a little bit, but not too much. I thought I was gonna spray one more load, but this hydraulic hose said otherwise. It's got a nice hole in it. Pulled up to load and had a puddle underneath me, so hopefully it didn't leak out too much. Hopefully we can just get a new one in the morning and be good. The advantage of planting the field by your house is that you can have your daughter ride with you and then you can go put her to bed. Uh, Nathan's over here working on the sprayer. He's a, he might go plant while I put her to bed if he gets time. Uh, but we can just go right in the door here. Wow, you, you've got a lot of jugs. You get, you planning on drinking? Already drinking all. Yeah, Nathan, Nathan, it's been hot today. It was like 100 degrees, super humid. Weed harvest is done and, and uh, we're, we made good progress on planting today and it's it's not over yet. I'm hoping to get my field done tonight after I put Brighton to bed. You ready to go to bed, Brighton? Yeah. No. <laughs> there goes the tractor, Brighton. Look, there it goes. It's kind of hard to see through the window. That's, that's Nathan, that's Uncle Nathan. Well, I'm finishing up the field here, last pass. It's been a pretty good day today. Tomorrow, uh, we're gonna plant like I said, we're gonna plant our uncle's field here. And then we will be done over here by my house with Double Crop Milo and we will move out to the main farm. But uh, we are making very good progress on Double Crop. Uh, and it's still June, so that's a good deal. Okay, time to get this combine tucked away a little bit in the shed. It's the next day, we're gonna finish up this field of my uncle's here. And so uh, we're gonna get the planter full of fertilizer and then I've got to load it with seed as well. So uh, we're gonna fire up this uh, Vanguard engine and banjo three inch pump that's also capable of four inches. And if you saw a couple videos ago, we plumbed all this together with banjo fittings. And so uh, we're gonna show you how quickly it pumps. All right, three minutes, 45 seconds for about 1,400 gallons of fertilizer. That's pretty fast. That's a lot faster than it used to be. It was only about, what, six or seven years ago that we had an eight row planter with just the planter fertilizer tanks and then like a, a, a little small shuttle. And we would only plant seven or eight acres at a time and it would take a long time to fill. And it was a pretty slow going process. Well, now we have a 16 row planter, twice the size, We've got this baby, which really changes the game. We can plant 50 acres per fill instead of like eight or nine acres, or maybe it was like 17. I don't remember, but it's a big difference. And then with this new banjo pump, um, we're basically filling in at least half the time as it used to take uh, to fill, fill this trailer. So everything has been improved efficiency wise and uh, feel really good about this setup.
Kobe's getting some much needed cab time with me. I've been taking my wife and daughter on a lot of tractor rides compared to him and I think he got a little jealous but he's enjoying the air conditioning today. It's hot. Thanks for watching everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.